Between 1996 and 1999, I would go over to America for five weeks each year and be part of an electric vehicle race team. I did quite a lot of development work on an electric Porsche 914 that was uh, quite a moderately successful little car up against some much higher budget op opposition. And uh, during that time I was also planning my own flagship electric vehicle conversion as it were. And in the early 2000s I got this Mark II 1984 Sirocco GTI on the road as an electric vehicle conversion. And for a number of reasons I sold it sometime in 2005 and uh, missed it in some ways and as time went on I thought you know it would be great to have it back and upgrade it with some modern batteries and then eventually the bloke I sold it to got in touch to say that uh, he wasn't going to be able to do anything with it and would I like to buy it back so I did a deal and it came home and it's uh, looking a little sad it's still very sound um, in fact just about the worst corrosion on the entire car is that wheel arch section there which is a moderately extensive repair to do right but um, it's still up to MOT standard but there's lots of little rust spots all over the place uh, in particular I'm probably going to have to take the screen out to uh, investigate this bubbling and down here but nothing too serious uh, worse though is the interior which is not a pretty picture the, uh, it apparently had the uh, side windows smashed and uh, rain got in and it looks like the, uh, the sunroof may have jammed and not been sealing so it got taped up so that's all stuff that's got to be dealt with so this vehicle um, is a series wound brushed DC motor and it's a 9 inch frame GE which I got from Wild Evolutions Roderick Wild who I knew quite well from the racing and uh, it's the rear battery box which held 8 Optima uh, blue top or yellow top deep cycle batteries I did have both in at various stages um, so that's a 96 volt set in the rear I think they had a nominal capacity of was it 45 amp hours um, very few of them ever seemed to actually meet that spec but they were um, very low internal resistance which and because um, they had a very high uh, plate area uh, and that meant that uh, the capacity didn't drop terribly under high discharge what they call a low pukert exponent which was a big problem with lead acid batteries you didn't lose the capacity you just kind of walled it up so that you couldn't get to it Give me a moment to pause, I'll open the bonnet. So under the front here, you've got a battery box, identical to that at the rear. Uh, the grey box at the back there contains uh, the two high voltage, high current contactors, uh, the current sensor, uh, a fuse, and a pre-charge resistor and pre-charge relay. The Auburn Scientific Grizzly motor controller which was rated 
for 192 volts nominal, 680 motor amps. Uh, sits down here. It uh, had ports for water cooling, but in fact I never found um, it necessary to add any active cooling on it. The 12 volt battery would have been in here. One of the major re-engineering jobs uh, was for the brakes. These, um, the Mark II Sirocco is a Mark I Golf floor pan and they never designed it to be right-hand drive. And the right-hand drive conversion by the factory was not a brilliant job. Um, the brake servo would have been in this area and there was a relay linkage running all the way across the back and down to this area and all of this grey metal work you can see in here um, is stuff I fabricated so there's a right angle linkage and the servo mounted um, across the bulkhead now one of the problems is that they didn't reinforce and stiffen the bulkhead so when you apply the brakes hard um, the entire pedal box and indeed the steering column you can feel it flexing and the brakes never felt inspiring um, and the usual solution to that was to fit a uh, larger diameter servo off a Mark II 16 valve in place of the standard servo which would lower the um, the pedal effort and then to um, fit a larger bore master cylinder so you are moving more brake fluid which would then stiffen the hydraulic side of the system now there's no room for a bigger servo in here um, not with this battery box but that may change uh, there is also the option these days um, of a dual diaphragm servo which gets more assistance out of the same size package anyway I'm going to get the front battery box out and we perhaps be able to see a little more but it only took me about 10 minutes to take out the motor controller and the battery box and I spent a long time planning to make that possible so you can see the 9 inch GE motor um, I welded a mount directly onto the side of the motor casing and that also incorporates a bracket for the um, the MES DEA -E um, vacuum pump that provides the vacuum for the brake servo. Another little bit of engineering is the uh, clutch cable arrangement which would normally have come vertically from here and is being turned through a right angle uh, using a uh, handbrake pulley from a Fiat X19 to change the direction run the cable off. The cable could have benefited from being shortened but worked perfectly well so I left as is and there's the blower motor to cool the main traction motor which to be honest probably wasn't needed the uh, even doing um, fairly spirited laps of the Anglesey race circuit I never got much heat into the, to the motor the box at the front there contains the Zyvan NG3 charger and uh, I went through a lot of options on the, um, the placement of the, the charger and because uh, they essentially have almost zero environmental protection on the charger itself it's just a blow moulded plastic cover on a steel base plate and uh, so this, the, the grill is blocked in, um, the charger is mounted away from all the sides of the box and uh, there's actually a divider down the middle of the box so that the airflow goes in through one of the 
uh, the louvered vents there and out the other and uh, it was it had proved pretty effective at keeping any any moisture out um, even some, in some I mean certainly when driving at Anglesey I was driving through standing water on track at various stages um, obviously it has I haven't seen the inside here for well over a decade but uh, it's not looking too bad I'm trying to remember how the reversing light arrangement works I'm sure I had it coupled up but it looks like the the plugs missing I don't recall any other separate sensors I can't see any wiring going to the gearbox so that's something to investigate uh, this was a uh, RPM pickup um, that I'm not sure if I ever got around to utilising but I in installed it so anyway um, obviously everything needs to get taken apart and cleaned and tidied up and the plan at the moment is to buy some Tesla modules um, the original system is 192 volt, though the controller will work down to 96 or even lower, I think. Uh, but the plan is to go as close to that 192 as possible, keep the original traction set up as is. You know, if I went to, you know, a leaf motor or something, or put a Tesla motor in it or whatever, um, it's not true to how I built it. Um, I really only rescued this car because I built it. Um, and it demonstrated what was possible even all those years ago. So I kind of felt that the, the batteries were just something you changed and upgraded as the technology improved anyway. And the efficiency was pretty good, uh, to be honest. Um, and I wouldn't be gaining a massive amount going to a, um, an AC motor or a synchronous AC um, the main thing I'd get is regenerative braking which the series wound motors um, it was tricky to make them some regen and they were quite limited in how much um, regen you could safely do without you getting arcing problems but uh, there we go that's uh, my Sirocco from nearly 20 years ago.